Uh, good morning, everybody. It's really a great pleasure to open the now already seventh Vancouver Nanomedicine Day. And this year it's for the second time in a virtual format. My name is Urs Hafeli, and I'm a professor in pharmaceutics, drug delivery and nanomedicines here at the University of British Columbia. My faculty of pharmaceutical sciences is very supportive of this field. In fact, nanomedicine is a central field for UBC, which also houses NMIN, the Canadian Nanomedicines Innovation Network. And uh, I also always like to give a bit of statistics. And here it is about this year's meeting. It's really wonderful that so many of you are able to join from more than 40 countries. And for people who don't know it, what you see on this picture, that is Vancouver from the uh, UBC side with the mountains in the background. So people that are new to the field, they always ask, what is nanomedicine? And one of the early uh, pioneers in the field, Robert Freitas, he answered the question as nanomedicine is the medical application of nanotechnology. And uh, I would like to show you a rather old video, but I still kind of like it, find it nice and cheesy. What if we could screen for thousands of diseases all at once with just a single drop of blood? What if we could search out and destroy cancer cells without surgery or chemotherapy? What if we could restore eyesight by injecting tiny particles that help the body repair injured nerves? Jeez. These scenarios may seem far-fetched, but they are among the long-term goals of researchers working in the new field of nanomedicine. But what is nanomedicine? Nanomedicine is the application of nanotechnology to medicine. Nanotechnology is the science of the small, the science and now these days also the engineering and applications of very small structures. It's kind of like a giant game of Lego, only it is very small and the building blocks are molecules and atoms. If you look in biology, most of the components of your cells and all of your proteins are all nanoscale objects. So what doctors need are tiny tools that can work with fantastic precision at the nanoscale, the size of the smallest working parts of our bodies. So here you see some of these tiny tools that we are using nowadays in nanomedicine. So we have polymeric, inorganic and lipid based things. So those could be polymer nanoparticles, dendrimers, polymer micelles, and also silica nanoparticles, quantum dots, magnetite, iron oxide nanoparticles. And then of course the big ones of the day, you know, liposomes, lipid nanoparticles, emulsions, uh, all these can be used and of course, also you can do prodrugs, you can do just uh, antibodies, aptamers, many other things. And once we have them, we can actually use them at different sizes and shapes. And with that kind of determine where they go, will they extravasate? So get out of a capillary into the tissue. This would, of course, be the best application if we can get them out into a tumor and attack a tumor there. Or if we want them to penetrate mucous barriers that are difficult, then we have to maybe change the charge, for example, to a positive charge that works best with uh, cell-penetrating peptides, for example. There is a lot, once we are able to or understand how to go across these barriers, then we can go and edit the genomes. We can use these things as diagnostic tools and find out is this patient uh, um, of this kind that we can treat it with this drug or not. And we can also then target immune cells 
interact with the body, change the responses. We can do CAR T cell therapies. So actually treat cancer like that. And again, get over different barriers and deliver things, for example, to the lungs and treat certain local diseases there. So while this is all very interesting, uh, we also need to kind of always know, uh, is this what we are doing here? Is this important and relevant? And one way of doing that is actually doing a literature search. So I did a very simple one. I just put nanomedicine or nanomedicines in my search field and then just search in titles. So last year, you see it here, we had 508 papers published with the name nanomedicine or nanomedicines in the title. If you look at the term anywhere, in the search field, then you get 4, 000, or 5,600 titles. And this year, although the year is only two thirds over, we have almost reached the same numbers. So we will actually have more publications. And uh, the amazing thing you can see here in this paper that a few colleagues from Vancouver published recently in a very nice review and it's about the development of nucleic acid therapeutics and I'm sure Drew Weissman will give us much more insight into this area later on. So if you look at this timeline here then you see all these strange names and most of you will not be familiar what they are but if you look for example up Kinamro then uh, we see that that is a drug that can be used to lower LDL levels in high cholesterol patients. Spinraza is another one that's to used to treat spinal muscular atrophy, something that has, we were not able to treat until this was developed. Then earlier, Glybera was used to treat lipoprotein lipase deficiency, so another genetic disease that had no cure. And there is more, there is streamlamellis that goes after immunodeficiency, macchiogen, which prevents blood vessel growth in age-related macular degeneration, or on patro that treats a certain type of polyneuropathy. So many, many different applications are available. The newest ones, of course, you all know, COVID-19 vaccines and lots of cancer treatments are currently being evaluated. And by enhancement, I mean they're combined with older types of chemotherapies. Then we can treat Alzheimer's and Parkinson very soon. So people are working on that. And uh, again, diagnostic advances, cell-based biosensing and imaging is currently being looked at. And then for people like me who do drug delivery, we can, with these nanomedicines, take older drugs and target them to the right spot. But we can also then have these targeted um, nanomedicines release the drug in a certain spot at a certain time. So we can do trig triggered release. So all this is just really an unbelievable amount of new things that we will be able to do. And people are working. Uh, a lot on this. So I think this is what we are going to speak about today. And I th I'm sure at the end of the day, you will agree with me that nanomedicines is a very, very exciting area. So with this, I would actually like to get started with our first speaker. <laughs> 